Most of you are probably new here because I'm a tiny channel. So first off, thank you for clicking on the video. And as for me, my name's Nick. I'm 27 years old. And for the past three weeks, I've been living in this van full time while still working as an engineer. In this video, I wanna take y'all with me for a couple days on my van life adventures and just kind of talk about some of the struggles I've been facing being brand new to making van life videos. So with that, I'm starving. So let's go find some food and then get checked into the campground for the night. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I already ate like half the shrimps on the way over here. It's too hungry to resist. But it's a good thing I have food because kind of brings me to one of my main difficulties with van life and that's cooking. I won't spend too much time on it for this video because I already touched on it quite a bit on one of my first van life videos, but I found it's just a lot easier to just pick something up really quick. And Neptune's Night in Malibu is try to be because they show the restaurant in the movie Point Break. And I think after Surf's Up, that's definitely second best surf movie of all time. It was like 20 bucks for this, but I'm so hungry, I think it's worth it. I mentioned it a little bit earlier in the video, but I actually have a campsite tonight. It's at Leo Carrillo Campground, just about five, 10 minutes south from here. And all the videos I've done so far have been at campgrounds, which I kind of don't like doing because I'd like to show more of stealth camping in the videos. But since I'm not traveling around like most other van lifers, I don't think it's really that good of an idea or that safe for me to post my stealth camping spots online. So that's why I haven't really shown it. And also just working full time and then trying to find places to sleep and eat and shower after work while trying to make videos at the same time can be pretty stressful. So it's nice whenever I'm ready to make a video, if I just find a campground for the night and takes most of that stress out of the way for me. I'm gonna go ahead and finish this meal. Enjoy watching the surfers for a little bit and then we'll drive over to Leo Creo, get checked in. And I think once we get over there, I wanna talk a little bit about what it's like living in such a small space. This van is a low roof Ford Econline E350. It's not like a high roof Sprinter or Ford Transit. So there's definitely some difficulties there, but we'll go through those in a second. Hey, how's it going? Howdy, I'll help you. Sir. Just checking in. Uh, what side? I think it's 95. 95. Thank you. Boom, we got it. Locked in. Fortunately, I'm by the bathrooms, but it was the only side open. Morning, guys. So yesterday, after getting checked into the campsite, I did end up checking the surf and going surfing right at sunset. It's too late and too dark to really film it, but the swell is picking up a lot today. So I think after work, I'll get some surfing clips. And this is peak swell at Leo and should be pretty good. I have to go into work in a little bit, but I think it's a good time to talk about living in a small space and trying to film in a small space as well with limited equipment. So you might have seen the van tour before, but now that I'm fully living in the van, this is what it's looking like. Most of the storage is work clothes, honestly. I think if I didn't have to work, I'd have a lot more space for clothes, but since I do, that's the majority of my clothes. But as for filming in the van, it's kind of tough and I'm just filming on an iPhone and a GoPro. So not too many options. And I have the iPhone 15 Pro, but it has good options for zoom and zoom out. But I found that zooming out really kills the quality of the video. And then if I just do like a times one, which is kind of standard for quality video, it seems like on iPhone, then the camera has to be pretty far away from me. And it's tough with such limited space and overhead room to like get good angles and good lighting. And a lot of times I have to turn the flash on 
to have decent lighting and then i'm blinded for like 10 minutes after <laughs> because i'm trying to look at the camera so if you have any tips for me on that that'd be very helpful and i'm normally a pretty organized person but i feel like with such a small space it's hard to really stay that organized i don't know why i think it'd be easier if i had more room but with a small space, I kind of just throw things places and somehow lose them, even though there's not that much space for it to be lost, but it still happens. <laughs> I'm sure I'll get better at organizing the longer I live in the van. Something I haven't touched on is not having a sink. And I think there's definitely some nice benefits to having a sink, like just brushing my teeth. I can't really stay in the van to do that. I have to go outside or find a place to do it. So really just for that, it'd be nice to have a sink. I wouldn't want to clean too many dishes in the van and I'm not cooking too much. It's mostly just making coffee in the morning. I definitely see the benefits of having a sink now. Now I have to go into work. After work, I'm gonna stop on my way back to the campsite and talk about what it's like having all your belongings in a vehicle and some of the stresses that gives you. I just wrapped up at work, heading back to the campsite now. But I pulled off on this beach right here and I think it's a good time to talk about kind of just how much the van means to me because I have all my belongings inside of it. And because of that, it means a lot more to me than any other vehicle I've ever had does. And that definitely changes the way you have a relationship with a vehicle. I'm a lot more cognizant of where I'm parking, how long I leave the van for, and I'm a lot more stressed out in traffic, especially in Los Angeles, because there's some crazy drivers out there. And it's not that big of a deal, but you know, if something goes wrong with the van, then I'm in a pretty bad spot and it could just get very complicated. So you definitely are a lot more stressed out about things involving your vehicle if you're living in it. But that's pretty much all I had to say about that. I think now I'm gonna finish the drive back to the campsite. It's only 10 minutes or so and hopefully hop in the water to go surf. Swell is looking really good right now. Living in the van is a pretty crazy thing to do. Definitely outside the norm, although more people are doing it nowadays. So when you tell people, they find out first reaction is often shock or Kind of negative, but I found once people take some time to digest it a bit and put themselves in your shoes as young single adult in a really expensive area, a lot of them kind of want to do the same thing if they're in your position and they're kind of enticed by the idea of, uh, of all the freedom it gives. But I'm definitely happy I'm doing it, so I'm gonna wax up this board and get in the water. It's definitely a bit stressful planning videos and putting so much effort in for the world to judge. But all the likes, comments, and subs that you give mean so much to me because of that. And it's a huge motivation to keep pushing forward. What I really love doing is outdoor activities and that's what helps me de-stress the most. I don't think it should really matter whether or not you have the same hobbies or just enjoy watching me do them. I'm just happy to share what I love doing and I'm really grateful for everybody tuning in and giving me support. So thanks again for watching guys and I'll see y'all in the next one.